This is the moment the quake struck. 11th of March 2011. Japan is hit by the worst natural disaster in a century. In the immediate aftermath of the tsunami, the cooling systems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are knocked out, resulting in a fire and radioactive leakage from the overheated reactors. To this day, the island nation continues to grapple with its worst crisis ever. But the world has witnessed a much greater nuclear catastrophe. 25 years ago, to be exact. On the 26th of April 1986, a testing process at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant went horribly wrong. Inadequate safety systems and inept handling of the situation resulted in a massive explosion that ripped open the plant's reactor number four, sending plumes of radioactive dust thousands of meters into the atmosphere. In the coming months, radioactive clouds would blanket much of Europe and poison its atmosphere for decades to come. Not surprisingly, in the initial days, the Soviet government tried to downplay the incident. The township of Pripyat, just three kilometers from the nuclear plant, was home to the workers at Chernobyl. Neither the scientists, engineers or construction workers nor their families were told about the imminent danger that they were in. This despite the lethal doses of radiation raining down on them. When I came home on the 26th of April, I saw that construction workers hadn't gone to work. Children were playing, there were trucks washing the road with some special form, and children were running around barefoot. At the same time, there were military people who were wearing masks. They were all recording radiation, and that made me realize that something was wrong. It was a horror film. The horror film continued for a full 36 hours. Close to 50,000 residents of the city receiving no protection from this deadly radiation. Finally, when the Soviet machinery moved, it was with blinding speed. Enacting the quickest and the most efficient evacuation of a city ever. People were given 20 minutes to get outside their houses and they were asked to take important belongings because they were told they would be back in three days. Everything was well organized. People were calm. Buses would come to the houses and we would just follow orders. 1,100 buses came and in two hours the whole town was evacuated. We honestly believed that this would be only for three days. We were told to take only important documents and valuables. On 29th April, it became clear that we were never going back because the Council of Ministers made some statements. Those three days have become 25 years for the likes of Valentina Borokhova, who used to work at Chernobyl's chemical laboratory. Her husband was a senior engineer in the Department of Nuclear Safety. They really had the perfect life in the perfect city. With a sense of pride, Valentina shows us the fourth floor apartment that they were allotted close to the city center. Pripyat was supposed to be the pride of Soviet Russia, a city of the future where the residents were helping to produce the energy of the future.